This guy is the GoFort P1500 and it is more of a travel style portable power station because it is lightweight. And when you get something that's lightweight, you get less watt hours. This is 1000 watt hours and because it's 1000 watt hours. If you used it at the 1500 watt max, you would get a runtime of under 45 minutes for this unit at full output. So that means if you're gonna purchase this, you're gonna want to run lower 500 to 800 watts out basically to get an hour and a half to two hours worth of runtime out of this. Obviously this would be best running a fan or something while you're camping and then maybe something higher powered for 10, 20 minutes, but that's about it. There's a minimalist things on here because of the low watt hours. Let's dive in and take a look at it. This might be minimalistic for some of the outputs as far as DC goes, but as far as the settings go here, it is really sweet. It has this joystick style button here, so we can go through, we can change the frequency. So it goes between 60 hertz and 50 hertz. We can also change the brightness, the charging speed. So if we'd like to charge the lithium ion batteries slower, we can change it to five hours. If we want it to fast charge, we can go down to two hours. And then we can also do an auto shutdown if we wanted it to turn off, if we were going to bed or different things like that. And then there's an about screen that's going to tell you all the firmware and anything else that's going on inside here. This is upgradable if you wanted to, but this screen is really nice. The color is great. The buttons are very precise. It tells you exactly what's being turned on and what's happening, the input and output watts. Now the kicker here is you have three USB outs, two USB-A, one USB-C. This USB-C is a 100 watt, which is nice. You have a place up top to hold all your cables, but we have to look in the back to find our three AC outputs. And then we have our charging port, which is nice because it does have an MPPT built right in. So we don't have to carry a large adapter. We just carry a small cord. And then our DC input, this is going to be for your solar panel or to charge it in your car. And then they have a place down here where you can hook up to other external batteries to make it more of a larger portable power station if you wanted to invest in more batteries. So I currently have a small shop vac and this heat gun hooked up along with our Fluke. You can see we're currently at 110 volts. We'll switch over 60 Hertz. This is gonna tell us exactly what's going on. We can see here, we have all our DC on and our AC out. Let's just kick our heat gun onto medium. We come up to 111 volts. It's gonna give us 700 watts about, if this was 120 volts, this would be a full 750 watt output. Because we're lower on volts, it's gonna be lower on watt output on this. Let's kick up to high. And we did kick up to 112 volts, which I like, 1200 watts out. It's nice to see this actually kick up because we are coming up to what would be one of the higher ranges that you'd use. And you can see with the low watt out or watt hour battery on the inside, 42 minutes left. If we were to continue running this, that's low. But if we were to drop this in half, which is probably where you would want to be with this. You're at 78 minutes, still low, but if you had a fan or something like that, let's take, you know, that's where you want to be, something low, a refrigerator, a cooler, something that's 200 watts, 300 watts, this thing would be great, unless you want to get that extra battery. Let's kick on our vacuum, that should trip this off. It did not, but you've seen we dropped to 104 volts, and we're at 1400 watts out. Usually that initial kick on this vacuum will trip something like that out. We're just gonna go to high here. That will definitely take this right out of the game. And it's dropping in voltage. This isn't good, not good at all. It should take it out. We're at 100 volts and it's saying 1500 watts out. We are drawing a ton and this will eventually hurt something. So this is a major, major downfall on this where it's going to limit the watts out and it's going to really struggle to do something but not kick yourself out. This is bad. This is where you wreck some sort of circuitry or start a fire. 
So this is a neat unit with a big flaw that it won't kick itself off when it's overloaded. So if you're looking at picking this up because you found it at a great price, two things, make sure you know what's hooked up to it. And if you're hooking up a laptop or anything like that, don't hook up something large and overload it where your voltage is gonna drop and possibly hurt things. I am surprised that this still kept 100 volts, but it was uh, severely limiting the performance of the vacuum, which you could probably hardly hear, or this heat gun. And if that was to be put inside of a refrigerator or something with a circuit board, those things are sensitive to this and is not going to be happy. So make sure that you use it at a lower watt out area so that you're not going to run into this issue and you'll be fine. But with that said, someone who's going to push this or not know what type of watts something is going to use or maybe not watch and then all of a sudden they're overloaded, you could have some major issues with this, especially long term because the fans are kicking on, everything's kicking on in this thing to keep it cool, but eventually this thing will overheat and that's not a good deal. I really wish they would come out and just put something in these and be like, hey, click it off. A lot of them that are more expensive will not take that. They will turn off, they will see, no matter if you have an induction motor hooked up or whatever else that you have, even a standard brush motor, whatever it is, it's going to pick that up, say, hey, we're overloaded, off. Not gonna deal with it. In this case, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on that because this is important to know. If you own this or are looking at buying it, do not overload it long term. Other than that, it's nice lithium ion batteries. They charge fast. They're gonna last you about 1,000, maybe 1,500 charges if you treat them well and use the slow charge. But if you're gonna use the fast charge, I'd plan on about 1,000 charges on this guy. Keep it stored at about 50% rather than stored full. Use this little place up top to hold all of your cords and cables. It has a nice situation here with you know being able to store everything. No big AC adapter. Cool stuff, but has its limitations. Keep that in mind. Leave your comments below, we always appreciate that. I look at these because there's a ton of nuances between them all, and if you're looking at buying one, make sure you research it. Make sure someone tests it to its max to see what happens. Watch that voltage so you know what's gonna be. It's important. Thanks for your time, guys. Have a great day.